Hi, I'm Tyler Moore. A couple of weeks ago, I bought this painting you see behind me online, all the way from southern China. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own online store so you can sell products not only to your local market, but to the entire world. So here's the online store that I'm going to show you how to make, step by step, with no steps skipped, using the same technology that professional web developers use and Fortune 500 companies. I have jewelry as my test product, but obviously you can have anything else that you want to sell. Up here we have our slider, our image slider, our product slider actually. And we can easily add things to the cart if we want. We can just add it to the cart or we can view more info. Down here we have our products. This store can also uh, have digital products, meaning if you make an ebook or you want to sell a digital product that you just download, uh, people can pay for it and be able to download it. We have our search right here. We have reviews and we have things on sale. This can all be changed or rearranged according to how you want your store. We have different uh, sections that we can go to. So let's say we just went to rings. We can see all of the rings. And we can click on this one. And we can click on it to make it bigger and go through the different pictures of it. So this is really an incredible store. We can also uh, have different uh, selections. So let's say we want the metal to be gold, or we can say we want it to be silver, which costs less. Or maybe we want it to be platinum, which is the most expensive. And people can add reviews, and we also have related products here. And most of this stuff is set up automatically for you. So let's say we want to add it to the cart. We'll just add to the cart. And now we can view our cart. And it's in there right there. You can easily go shopping. And let's say we want a necklace now. And we want to uh, select this necklace. Let's say I don't want gold and I want silver. And then I add it to the cart. And now I can view my cart. And the cart has updated and everything. And it's made my total. And I can have different shipping prices based on uh, a bunch of different things like priority mail. I can also change my cart right here if I just X this out right here. Then the cart totals change. Another cool thing about this website is if we go to rings, we can see our cart now that we have something in it. But we can also filter by, by price. So let's say that we only want uh, rings that cost over 4500 So we just take this and we put it to 5000 and we click filter. Now we can see only rings that are uh, above that number. So this is a really cool, full functioning uh, shopping cart that you don't need to know any coding or anything. And lots of professionals, web developers, and uh, Fortune 500 companies use the same platform we're going to be using, which is WordPress, to build this. So this is really cool. We also have an About section and we can start shopping. And we have a contact form so people can contact you and different things like that. So let's actually uh, view our cart and let's apply a coupon code. And I'm gonna show you how to set all this up. So we're just gonna put Tyler's in here and apply the code. So our discount is $149. So our order total is only three dollars 
So let's actually proceed to check out. Let's see how this whole thing works. And by the way, I'm going to be showing you how to do all of this step by step without skipping any steps and without any coding. So once you're on this page, you're going to want to fill out all of the billing information. Then you can choose how you want to pay, direct bank, check, PayPal, and these can be changed also. Then you, we can place order. So once we click place order, PayPal is going to, uh, it's going to send that order to PayPal. And uh, if they have a PayPal account, that's great. If you don't have a PayPal account, you just click right here. And it can take your credit card information. So because uh, I actually want to show you the whole process, I'm actually going to put in my credit card details, uh, but I'm going to obviously cover it up so that uh, people don't steal my uh, credit card number. So I'm just going to enter it in right here, and I'm going to review and continue, and I'm actually going to purchase this order and see what happens. All right, once I enter in my credit card information, it's gonna have me review uh, my order and uh, pay now. So we'll just pay now. And there we go, it says, Tyler, your order is complete. It gives me my order number. It tells me um, how it's gonna appear on my bank statement. And I can actually print the receipt if I want. So that is the whole order from the website, but now how does the website alert you that you've actually received an order? So pretending like you're the store owner and not the customer, uh, how does it alert you that you've got the order? So it alerts you by email. So if we go ahead and log into our email, We will actually see that we have new orders. So it says order received. So we click on it and we see that the heart necklace was the heart necklace was uh, purchased. Uh, the discount was applied and the order total was three dollars. So this is really cool. So that's what it looks like to the store owner. And it says a uh, new customer order again. And that's it. So, and we also get a uh, payment received from PayPal. So this is the PayPal payment received. So we get a, a few different emails telling that we've received the payment and uh, that our order is purchased. So now let's go back to our website. And just by the way, when you get a notification from your email that an order was received, so does your customer. So just to review everything, uh, once again, how it all works is it's pretty simple. You, your customer will select an item, let's say this item. Then they check out. So they'll add it to the cart and check out. Uh, once they check out, they pay through PayPal. And uh, once they pay, you'll get an email telling them that their order was received, and they will also get an email telling them that they've paid for the item. Once you do that, you should bill the, the product to them. So you, uh, whatever you're selling, 
just uh, send it to them and the order will be completed. So it's pretty simple. Uh, right now, I'm gonna show you that it actually did go into my PayPal. So if I go to paypal.com, and PayPal is free, by the way. So you can just sign up and get a free PayPal account. That's pretty easy. If I put in my password here, I will actually see that there is $2.63 uh, in my PayPal account. So why isn't there $3 just like, uh, like what we purchased? There's not $3 because every order PayPal takes 30 cents and like 2%. So that's how they make money. Uh, so PayPal is free for you to use except for it takes you know a tiny percent and 30 cents of uh, each order so just know that and that's just you know every credit card processor takes uh, a certain percent of what you bill it's a very small percent but that's just you know the cost of having an online store and selling to the world is you have to pay that little percent in uh, uh, a few cents so just know when you have orders of like a hundred dollars it only takes a little bit you know it doesn't take this seems like a huge amount to take because it's such a small amount but you're probably going to be selling things that are a little more expensive and just factor the cost in of paypal taking uh, i think it's 30 cents in two percent so so the next thing you're going to want to do is how do we get it from paypal to our bank account. So that's pretty easy. We just click withdraw. And we can transfer the money to your bank account. So and it takes three to four days. So it does take, you know, a little time, but it's free. So it doesn't cost you any more money to transfer it to your bank account. So uh, you just click this button and uh, you just transfer it to your bank account. You do have to put in your bank account number so that PayPal knows where to send uh, the money that you sell from your store. So again, the process is pretty easy. Someone buys uh, something from your website. Um, it goes into your PayPal account and then you transfer the money to your bank account. So it's all pretty simple and pretty amazing. All right, so let's get uh, started. All right, just to let you know, once again, this is a step-by-step -step tutorial with no steps skipped. You're not required to know any coding. This is a built on the same platform that professional web developers use and Fortune 500 companies. So it works on all smartphones, iPads, iPods, Macs, PCs, etc. You can use a Mac or a PC or a Linux uh, computer to uh, follow this tutorial and it'll all come out the same and it is an amazing shopping cart that's going to allow you to sell your products um, to your hometown and also to the entire world all right now let's go uh, do an overview of everything that we're going to cover so the first thing we're going to do is get a domain name which is like www.yourwebsite Dot com. This can also be your website.net, .org, .co, .uk, uh, whatever you want. This is the address of your store. Then we're going to get hosting. Now, hosting is a computer that's on 24 hours a day that allows you to store all of your information. So basically, if you had a website but you didn't have hosting, the website would just come up blank. But since you have hosting, it allows you to store all your graphics, your images, your uh, everything. It allows it to hold all of the information. So your website's the name, uh, your domain name is the name of your website. And hosting is where you store all of your website's content and information. All right, after we get our domain name, then we're gonna get hosting. Then we're going to install WordPress. Now WordPress is what's called a content management system. 
which just is a fancy way of saying it helps you manage your content. So instead of having to know HTML and CSS and PHP and all this coding, it's just like Microsoft Word where you can uh, drag in pictures and put in text and do everything like that. Just because it's easy doesn't mean that it's not professional though because uh, professional web developers are now starting to use uh, WordPress as their content management system of choice. Actually, it's the most popular uh, content management system out there. So it has a lot of support and it's really amazing. After we install WordPress, which is the platform uh, we'll be using to build your website, then we're going to install the theme. Now a theme is what the website looks like. So there are many different themes to choose from. It's almost the design of your website. And after we install a theme, then we're going to set up the store. We're going to do things like add the products, add the pricing, put things on sale, and all of that. So how much does all of this cost? Well, if you were to ask your local web developer to give you a quote on how much you know, this store would cost you, which I encourage you to do, it would be anywhere between $3,000 and $5,000, depending on where you live. Now, a lot of people think that I'm crazy and no one would charge that much for these things, but yes, they do. So uh, if you don't believe me, go get a quote and you'll be amazed. So it costs uh, three to $5,000, but how much is it gonna cost us if we do it ourselves? So a uh, domain name, meaning your website name, cost 12, uh, sorry, $15 a year. So this is a yearly cost. Every year, $15. Hosting, which is a computer that's on 24 hours a day that allows you to store all of your content. Basically, it gets you know all your information online. This is $10 monthly. Monthly. So for $10 a month, you're buying a computer that's on 24 hours a day that's, uh, that has a really fast connection so that when people go to your website, it pops up quickly and it stores all of your information. Uh, WordPress is free. The theme is free, luckily. Some themes cost uh, $70, $80, $120. Um, as cheap as $40, as expensive as you know, hundreds of dollars. But luckily, this one's free. So that's very cool. And we're going to set up the store, which is free also. So in total, uh, to get started, the total cost is $25, which is amazing because you'd pay anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000, and that's just the base price if you're going to hire a web developer to do it. So it's $25, and I'm going to show you how to get 25% off that. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's get started. Let's get our domain name and hosting. Luckily, we could get this at the same place, and we could get it in uh, from HostGator. So let's go do that right now. So first, we're going to go to HostGator.com. So just www.HostGator.com. So that's H-O-S-T-G-A-T-O-R.com. Now, there are many different hosting companies to choose from. There's actually thousands of different hosting companies to choose from. And honestly, I haven't tried all of them, but I really like HostGator because I've tried a few uh, different hosting companies, and before I thought all this web development stuff you know, was really difficult, but it's actually really easy. You know, I was on a different web host and things weren't updating and uh, files you know were missing and just it was crazy I thought I was doing something wrong I was pulling my hair out but uh, then I went to HostGator and it is much better so HostGator also owns uh, another good hosting company Bluehost um, but I like the HostGator team and support better so I like HostGator uh, mainly because of this live chat right here where you can click on it and you can get answers to your questions if you have any problems usually you won't have any problems but I have used them a few times and it really helps 
Now, you're not going to get instant live chat. It is going to take, you know, five to ten minutes uh, to get, you know, an, an answer and start chatting with people live. I prefer this um, from calling from people and being on hold and all of that. So the next thing I like about HostGator is its pricing. It has really good pricing. Um, and yeah, it's really good. So let's get hosting and our website name. So what we do is we click on web hosting right here. And then it has different packages. So we have the hatchling package, the baby plan, or the business plan. So, I mean the hatchling plan, the baby plan, or the business plan. Um, and it says it's 20% off, but I'm going to show you how to get 25% off. So which plan is right for you? So let me go over the important, uh, the important features of each plan. And really, there's only one main difference. Uh, I think the business plan is just uh, too much. You don't need that right now. Uh, you can get it. You can upgrade from any plan that you want uh, at a later date if you want. The Hatchling plan, uh, to me, it only allows a single domain name. That means a single website name, so only yourwebsite.com. If you know that you're only uh, going to be using one website, then the Hatchling plan is great for you. For me, I personally use and have the baby plan, which allows unlimited domains, which means unlimited websites. So I have mywebsite.com, myfriendswebsite.com, mymomswebsite.com, a whole bunch of websites. I have about 50 domains on this one plan. And you pay the same price um, no matter how many domains you have. You just have to pay the extra $15 a year for the domain. But you pay uh, the same amount for the hosting. So I like going with the baby plan. And I like going uh, month to month. So we can go month to month, or if you want to save money, they give discounts if you go a year at a time or six months at a time. I still do month to month just because I know that, you know, if any time HostGator starts acting up and, you know, trying to mess with me, then I can leave them and go to a different hosting company. Um, I've been with HostGator for like seven years, I think it is and they've been great all those years. So I really should go with a year plan to save money, but I still go with a monthly plan because uh, just that security and knowing that I'm not locked into anything. All right, once you do that, you choose your baby plan and monthly, then just click order now. All right, now this is the part where you choose your domain name or your website name. So we can put in a website name right here. If we put in something like google.com, then we continue. Uh, it's going to give us an error because google.com is already registered. So just know that uh, you can't register a domain that's already registered, obviously. If you already have a domain, like you got a domain from GoDaddy, you could put it in right here. If it's a new domain name, which it probably is, or a new website name, you're going to want to put it in here. So I'm just going to put in simple is key uh, as, our, as my website name. Obviously, yours is going to be different. And uh, we can choose between .com, .net, .org, .us. Now, if uh, you are from the UK or something, and uh, need like a .co.uk, then you need to go to somewhere like GoDaddy and register it there, then enter it in here. But for most people, uh, they're going to want to just put in their domain name right here. And for the coupon code, instead of using Snappy or whatever it says here, we're going to want to use Shopping25 which is going to save you 25% instead of uh, 20%. And this also gives me credit for uh, referring you to HostGator, which really helps me continue to make these free tutorials, so I appreciate that. So after you put in Shopping25 and you put in your domain name or your website name, you're going to click Continue to Step 2. 
All right, so now make sure you have the correct package, prob probably either the hatchling or the baby. Make sure you're getting 25% off and just put in your username. And security pin and fill out uh, the billing information. If you're from a different uh, country, then you can use PayPal. So you can use PayPal as uh, to process your payment. If you're from the United States um, or probably Canada or the UK, you could probably use your credit card. Uh, just click on credit card and fill that out. All right, so just fill all this out. And then there are a few hosting add-ons. So let me explain that to you. So we have our domain privacy protection, which means that anyone can uh, put in your domain name and look up your information, uh, you know, your contact information, like your phone number and your address. Uh, I trust people, so I don't really care about this. You know, this will actually hide your uh, contact information. But I'm just going to uncheck it because I don't mind that, you know, my phone number and address are online. But if you do, then you're going to want to add this, you know, you're going to want to select it so that it's private. This site lock adds an extra layer of security to your website. Um, I would say don't uh, add it on right now. If you ever want to add these on, you can add them on later. So just know that you can purchase this later at any time. Uh, this mobile website builder, our website's going to work. It, it's mobile friendly, so it's going to work on you know iPhones and smartphones and iPads and stuff. So we don't really need it. All right, so now we're going to review our order. So we have 24-7 live chat, which is free, account activation free, money back guarantee. So we have a 45-day money back guarantee, which is really cool. Um, hosting, we're getting the baby plan. Uh, the package is $9.95 uh, a month uh, minus 25% off because we have 25% off instead of 20% off and our domain registration is $15. So in total, it's, it's less than $25. Like I said, it's $22.46 for a, you know, thousand dollar website, thousands of dollars for the website, which is pretty cool. Once you selected all of the, all of this uh, things and you've unchecked some of these things, uh, click I have read and agree to the terms and conditions and click, and click create account. Once you've clicked the create account button, you're going to get this congratulations page and that's when you know it's time to check your email. All right, so once you've signed up for HostGator, you're going to want to log into your email and you're going to get this HostGator account information. Go ahead and click on the email and you'll see some really important information, some usernames and passwords and where you log in. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure to keep this email safe or even print it out. And uh, once we see, once we have it safe and printed, you'll see your control panel. So go ahead and click on your control panel. And the next thing we're going to do here is we've gotten our domain name, we've gotten our hosting, and now we're going to install WordPress. So we're moving along. So the next thing we're going to do is install WordPress. So in order to do that, we have to log into our control panel. So go ahead and click on that. And you'll see this login right here. So just go ahead and uh, either type or copy your name. You can right click, copy your name. and copy your password. Once you do that, all you have to do is click login. Once you're logged in, you're now going to want to install WordPress. So in order to do that, we're going to just scroll down until we see uh, under software slash services until we see quick install. So we're going to click quick install. 
and on the left here we're going to click WordPress. Then click continue. And it's asking you where you want to install WordPress. So I have the baby plan and I have many, many different domain names, many website names. So I'm going to choose uh, the website that I want to install it on. You'll probably only have one website, so it'll be easy. Then it's asking you, do you want to put it on slash something? Like, do you want it to install Word? Do you want to install WordPress on yourwebsite.com slash something? No, you just want to install it on yourwebsite.com. So make sure to leave this blank. Then it's asking for the admin email. This is just your email address. Then it's asking the blog title, which uh, is the name of your website. So we're just going to put shopping cart. And you can always change this later. Uh, you can enable auto upgrades, that's fine. <clears throat> it's asking for the admin user. You could put your name or you could put admin. Then it's asking for your first and last name. So Tyler Moore. All right, and once you have all this filled out with this blank, then click install now. All right, so it takes a little while, but it goes. And now it says, congratulations, uh, your installation is ready. Before you do anything else, make sure you copy down this password, uh, this username and password, or print it out. So don't do anything else before you uh, copy down this username and password. Now it says, congratulations, your installation is ready. You can access it now by going here. Well, actually, you can't because new websites need anywhere from 2 to 24 hours to work. So it usually takes about uh, 2 to 3 hours to work most of the time, but it can take all the way up to 24 hours to work. So right now I'm going to take a break, and I'm going to wait about 3 hours, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to continue this uh, tutorial. So I'll see you in about 3 hours, because that's how long we need to wait in order for our new website name to work. All right, so I'll see you soon. All right, so I've waited about three hours, and I'm just going to click right here to see if my website works now. And it does. So this is the basic installation of WordPress. So you've just saved yourself a lot of money just by, you know, uh, getting to this step. So let's see where we are in our progress. So we've gotten our domain name, we've gotten hosting, we've installed WordPress. Now we need to install the theme and set up our website. All right. So what we can do now is uh, we have our website here and we could just click around and look at it. There's a sample page and you know, it looks okay, it, but it's not amazing. So we're going to turn it into something that's okay to something that is amazing. So what we want to do in order to edit this website, we have to log into the back end, also known as the dashboard. So the way we do that is we go to ourwebsite.com.net.org, whatever it is. Go to yourwebsite.com forward slash WP dash admin. So yourwebsite.com forward slash WP dash admin. And then just click enter. And now it's asking you to log into the dashboard. And the dashboard is just, again, another way of saying the back end of the website. All right, so what is our username and password? We have that from our quick install. So we could just copy this password right here. Press copy. Username, admin, password, paste it in there.
All right. Then click login. All right, so now we're in the back end of our website, also known as the dashboard. And one of the first things that I like to do once I'm here is to change this password. So I can't remember this password, so I'm just going to change it. So once we're in the dashboard, go to users, and then click on your username. and scroll all the way down <clears throat> and it says new password and just put in a new password. All right, then click update profile. All right, so there you go, you've changed the password. I told you this WordPress stuff is pretty easy. All right, now that you've uh, changed the password, we can close these tabs up here and we could go back to the main dashboard. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is just a few checks, just to make sure the web, your website is set up just like mine. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to settings, then permalinks. Once you're here, make sure that default isn't selected, but either day and name or post name is selected. Day and name is fine. What this does is instead of having numbers uh, in your website name, it actually puts the name of your page. So as an example, If we click on the sample page right here, if this is selected to default, it would actually have, instead of slash sample page, it would actually have slash P equals 178 or whatever. And that's not really good for the search engines to remember, and that's not good for humans to remember. So you wanna make sure that this setting under settings and permalinks is set to day and name or post name uh, almost anything, just not default or numeric. All right, so we're just gonna click day and name and we're gonna click save all changes. The next thing that we're gonna uh, check is what's called uh, caching. And what caching does is it allows your website to load really quickly because it saves a version of your website. But what it also does is it doesn't show updates. So you may be updating your website and you keep on clicking refresh, 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 uh, but the website's not updating. What you need to do is turn off caching. So caching helps speed up the website, but it also doesn't you know, show the changes for the website. So once you're done changing all the things that you wanna change in your website, then you can turn caching back on. But for now, let's disable caching so that we can see all the updates uh, when we edit our website. So the way we do that is just click plugins and uh, scroll down to a WP Super Cache and click deactivate. All right, so now caching is disabled um, and now all your website edits will change. Now, some of the things like plugins you may not understand yet, but I'm gonna get to all of that later. We're just setting up the website so that it's just like mine so we can, so that you can follow step by step. All right, the next thing that, whoops. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to install the theme. So some themes cost money, but this one is free and this one is really good. So to do that, most of the time, you just go to Appearance and Themes. And you can you know select different themes. So you just click on Appearance, then Themes, and then you click on Install Themes. 
Now, once we're here, we have to go to another website to download uh, a theme. So <clears throat> we're going to go to wothemes.com, W-O-O-T-H-E-M-E-S.com, wothemes.com. And most of the time they charge uh, 70 to I think $140 for a nice looking theme. And a theme is the design of the website. So right now the design of the website looks like this with uh, you know this image here and this black navigation and the content here. Uh, a different theme can look completely different. It's the design of the website. So uh, what we're going to do is first we're going to sign into your account. So just click on my account. And if you don't have an account yet, you can register for a free account. It's pretty easy. Uh, that's all you have to do. I already have account. I already have an account, so I'm just gonna put in my username and password and click login. All right. Uh, once I do that, I'm gonna go and to themes. And I'm going to check off the free option, and I'm going to click search. All right, so these are all different themes. These are all different free themes. So um, as you can see, this has a certain design, this has a certain design, and this has a certain design, and so do these. Uh, we want the one called Wootique, because it's a really cool one. So we're just going to click on it. And right here, we can preview it, and we can look at it. <clears throat> we can see the demo of it. And we can uh, click Free Download. So once you're ready to download it, just click Free Download. Click on it. And click on it again right here. All right, so it downloaded, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it to my desktop. So um, if you're on a PC, you might want to save as and save it to your desktop. If you're on a Mac, uh, you could just drag it to your desktop or just remember where it is. All right, so now it's on my desktop. All right, so now I'm going to go back to uh, install themes. So just click Appearance, then Themes, and Install Themes. And then I'm going to click Upload, this button right here. Then I'm going to choose the file. And I'm, I'm going to choose the one that I just downloaded. So I'm going to click on the one that I just downloaded, and I'm going to open it. Then I'm going to click Install Now. Then I'm going to click Activate. All right, now I'm going to go to my website and see uh, if that changed anything. In here, it says WooCommerce must be installed. So what does that mean? That means in order for all of this to work, we need to install the plugin WooCommerce. And I know uh, I'm going to explain plugins a little later, but basically what plugins do is it extends the functionality of WordPress. So right now, um, the website needs an a additional add-on in order to enable shopping the shopping cart function. So in order to do that, just click on plugins and click on add new. Then search for WooCommerce and search plugins. So once we find it, and this is the one right here, we can just click Install Now. So actually, let me explain what a plugin is now to you. Uh, 
plugin extends the functionality of WordPress. So that means if by default, you know, uh, WordPress doesn't come in with a contact form, you can actually just uh, search for a contact form plugin and then it will add it onto your website. All right, so once uh, the WooCommerce is uh, downloaded, just click Activate Plugin. And uh, once you do that, you'll see this page and it'll say Install WooCommerce Pages. So just click that. All right, now if we go back to our website, we click refresh, the website is uh, looking much better. So you can see that this theme changed the design of the website. All right, the next thing that I want to do is I want to change uh, my currency and region. I'm not from the United Kingdom, but if you are, obviously keep it the same. I'm from the United States. And I'm from California, so I'm just going to put that there. My currency isn't sterling. Um, it is U.S. dollars. And countries allowed to purchase, um, I'm just going to put all. All right, and once I do that, I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to click Save Changes. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Settings, then General, because now we're going to change our website store name. So go to Settings and General, and right now the store is called Shopping Cart, but I'm going to change it to Jewelry Store. Then I'm going to Save Changes. All right, then I'm going to go back to my dashboard. In order for the changes to show up right here, for it to say Jewelry Store instead of Wootiek, what you have to do is you have to click on Wootiek, and you have to just scroll down and click, make sure this is checked off, scroll down and click Save All Changes. <clears throat> you can also obviously uh, upload your own custom logo and I have a video on how to create a logo without Photoshop um, on my YouTube channel so you can check that out so once this is checked off and you've clicked save all changes we can go here and just click refresh and it'll change to jewelry store it'll change to whatever name you uh, set in settings general. So it says jewelry store here and it says jewelry store here. All right, now we're done setting up the website. And now what we can do is start getting into the funner stuff, which is adding products to your website. So I'm just going to visit the site right now. And as you can see, it looks pretty crazy uh, with no products. And uh, yeah, it's not that great. So let's add some products and let's make it great. So the way we do that is uh, we go to our dashboard and we click on products. And then we click on Add Product. All right, so I'm doing jewelry. Obviously, you'll be doing watches or fabric or succulents or whatever you're doing. I don't know. Uh, so I'm just going to put diamond ring. Let's say that's my first uh, product. And then I could add in some uh, description text. So I'm just going to copy some over here and paste some right there. 
And then we can scroll down and it, it says give you a SKU number. That's a stock keeping unit number. That's just a uh, specific number so that you can keep track of your inventory. You don't need to put it, um, but if you have a lot of inventory, it might be a good idea to keep track of it. So we have a regular price here and a sales price here. Let's say the regular price is uh, $21,000 for a very nice diamond ring. And the sales price is $14,000. Um, after we do that, you're going to want a set featured image. So this is the image that you're going to use for uh, displaying on the store. So just click set featured image and then select files. And then you'll find on your computer uh, where that image is. So um, I'm just going to find the diamond ring here. And I'm going to press open. All right, and once it's uh, uploaded, you just click on it right here. And you scroll down a little bit, uh, and you press set featured image right here this button all right so it sets it as the featured image and then we can publish all right so let's see what that did if we refresh our store we can see that in recent products we have a sale item here because remember we changed it from 21,000 to 14,000 and we can click on it and we go to a page um, and we have a product description. That's the same thing as this right here. And we have our uh, price from 21,000 to 14,000. That's right here. 21,000 to 14,000. And we can add it to our cart. So we add to cart. It asks us to view our cart and we can uh, proceed to checkout. Now the PayPal uh, checkout payment system isn't uh, ready yet, so it's not gonna work, but uh, we'll get to that later. So that is adding your first product. So now what I want you to do is add a whole bunch of products. So I'm gonna actually um, add another product here. I'm gonna show you the whole process one or two more times and then you'll get the hang of it and uh, we'll go from there. So to add a product again, um, we will click on products and then click add product. Let's say this is a diamond necklace. All right, and then we add a little description And uh, we set the regular price. Um, maybe it only has a regular price. Maybe it's not on sale. So we'll do $150. So regular price. Then we set uh, the featured image. So set featured image. Uh, we can click upload files here. Select files. So here's a diamond necklace. And then you click on it and you set as featured image. All right. And then you click publish right here. So now if we look at our store again and click refresh, we will see that there is uh, another product, diamond necklace, and we can add it to cart and it adds to it. There are no reviews of it yet. And uh, we can expand it again. So that's pretty cool. All right, so just one more time and then I'm gonna let you uh, keep on populating your website with all of the things. So let's pretend like we're in the dashboard again and click on products and click add product. All right, let's say these are diamond earrings and the description. And let's say this is uh, 
$450, but it's on sale for $385. All right, and that's set featured image. Upload files, select files, and let's find some diamond earrings. Here we go. Click on it and set as featured image. All right, once that's done, click publish. And then we can visit our site and we see that now we have three products. Two of them are on sale. So if we click on it, we can see it, we can add it to the cart again. And the cart updates. And we can get a bigger view of it. All right, so just keep on doing that until your whole website is populated with uh, products. So I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to, you know, keep on doing that over and over again. I'm not going to waste your time. Um, and I'm going to fill the whole website up with products. And then we're going to continue on from there. So I will see you soon. Okay, so now I've added more products to my website. So let's look at it there. And I added the products in the same way that I showed you how to add the products. I didn't do anything extra or anything. So I just uh, added more products. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this uh, Hello World uh, blog post. So this website can also be a blog, um, but we're not using it as a blog, but obviously you can. But uh, that's not in this tutorial. So we're going to get rid of this right here. All right, so do, to do that, you uh, go back to the dashboard. And you click Boutique. Then you click Homepage Settings. And uh, uncheck Display Your Latest Post on the homepage. Also, make sure that uh, this says Slider and this is 8. All right, which we'll get to in one second. All right, then click Save All Changes. And let's go back to our website and let's see that we don't have that there anymore. So it's looking a little cleaner. This is still messed up up here, but it's looking a little better. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, add some featured products in here. So the products that we want to feature and we want the users to see first, we're going to put in right here. All right, so to do that, we go back into our dashboard. Then we click on products. And now we have a list of all of our products. And what we can do is we can hover over it and click quick edit. And click featured. And update. So now let's see if that did it. And now we have one item that's featured. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's keep on doing that for a bunch of them. Let's do it for eight of them. So let's go back to our dashboard. Let's go to products. And let's say we want to feature also this necklace. Featured update. Uh, let's see what else we want to feature. Maybe we want to feature these rings. So quick edit, featured, update. Maybe we want to feature this diamond ring. Quick edit, featured, update. Maybe this necklace. Maybe these rings. I think we're at five now. Maybe these heart earrings. I think that's six. Uh, maybe these silver earrings. 
seven, and one more. Maybe these diamond. All right, so uh, we should have eight feature things if I counted right. Maybe I didn't. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it's looking really good. And we have a little slider, and that looks pretty amazing. So we can also click on it, and we can, you know, either add it to the cart from right there or just click and see uh, more about it and obviously expand it and do everything that we could normally do so that is pretty cool the next thing we're gonna do is delete the sample page because after all it's just a sample page so we see our sample page right here and it's not that cool so let's delete it let's go into our dashboard and if you ever get logged out of your dashboard, you just uh, go to yourwebsite.com forward slash wp-admin, and you can log back in. All right, so we go into our dashboard, and we click on Pages. And we find that pesky sample page, and we just click Trash. Now, it's good to put things in trash instead of delete them permanently, because now it's just in the trash, chilling. And uh, if we really want to delete it, we can click on trash and delete it from there, just like your computer. All right, and then we go back to our website, and we see that that sample page is gone, and the navigation looks a little better. Next up, how do we add product variations? So let me show you what that means. Let's say, as an example, uh, we have this heart right here and let's click on it and uh, this heart is available in gold or silver so um, we want just different options gold or silver and then we can add it to the cart and maybe the product variations have different prices uh, another example would be if you sell t-shirts, maybe you have mall, uh, small, medium, large, extra large, and things like that. So how do we do that? Well, first we go into our dashboard, and we click on products. And let's find this heart and just click on it. And if we scroll down under product data, uh, we could click variable <clears throat> product. Uh, then we can click the uh, attributes tab. And we can add another one. So just click add. And maybe the name is the general category. So if you're selling t-shirts, this would be like sizes. If you're selling jewelry, maybe this would be metals, like the different types of metal you want to use, metal. And then enter in some values. So we're going to have gold. <clears throat> no, start with silver. And then do the pipe symbol, which is usually right above your uh, return. So it just looks like a uh, it just looks like a L or an I, but it's not. It's a it's called the pipe symbol, and uh, just find it on your keyboard. It's a weird symbol, not often used, but it's there. Trust me. Um, usually around or above the enter or return on the right side of your uh, keyboard. So sometimes you have to hold shift and then click on it, and it just looks like that. All right, so silver, and then we separate by the pipe symbol. Uh, gold, and then we'll separate by the pipe symbol again. And platinum, all right? So after we do that, we're gonna wanna check off use for variations. 
and then go ahead and click update. All right, now uh, go to variations right here. And click on add variation. And then choose the metal. Let's say uh, we want silver right here. And the price for silver is 150. And now we can add another variation. Let's say this is gold. And the price for gold is 175. And now we can add another variation. And let's say this is for platinum and this is 225. But let's say this is on sale for 200. All right, so we have a bunch of different options here. Um, but we can click update. All right, now if we look at the product, we can see that uh, it says from 150, and we can choose our option. Let's say we want silver, it's 150. Gold, it's 175. Platinum, it's on sale for um, from 225 to 200. So that is really cool. You can also select a default selection. So to edit the product quickly, we could go up here and click Edit Product. And go to Variations. And it says Default Selection. We can say uh, Silver is the default selection. And say Update. Now if we go back to our store, We can see when you hover over this, it says from 150 instead of saying uh, 1250 or whatever. So we can select our options now. And we have silver, and now silver is checked off by default. So silver, gold, and platinum. So that's how you add a product with different variations. So the next thing that we're going to learn is how to set up a product that you're able to download, that the customer is able to download. Let's say for an example you write an ebook or maybe some instructions on how to do something and you make it into a text file or a zip file or a PDF and you want to sell that online in your store and have the customer download it automatically without you having to do anything. So uh, what we can do is we could just go to products and add a product. And I'll say this is a Tiffany ebook. And uh, we'll just say this is a great ebook that will show you how to make jewelry. All right. And uh, let's say the price for this is $10. And uh, what we do now is we click on this downloadable uh, option. So just check it off, downloadable. And now we're going to upload the file um, that you want the person to download. So if it was actually an ebook, then we would upload an ebook. So I don't really have an ebook, but I'll just select the theme file on my desktop. So open. All right, and we'll just click use this image. It's not an image, but use it. Okay, so now when someone purchases this ebook, they'll download this file. So this can obviously be a PDF or something. All right, and then now we're going to set the featured image just like we would on a regular uh, product. And 
and maybe this is the downloadable book. And we're just going to set featured image. You've done this before. so. All right, then we're going to click Publish. So now when we go to, we visit the website, um, we have this new product, and we click on it, and we can add it to the cart, and check out. And once we check out, once we put in all of this information and check out, uh, it's going to give us a link to download it. So it's pretty simple. So that's how you add a downloadable product to your website. The next thing that we're going to set up is called widgets or sidebar widgets. So what that is, is if we click on this necklace, we see that we have recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, meta, but this all doesn't mean anything really right now. So how do we set this up so maybe there's a search bar and uh, maybe the shopping cart is in here, maybe a price filter, which I'll show you, maybe recent reviews, and uh, different product categories. So let's see how to change that. So uh, let's just go into our dashboard. Let me actually open up a new tab so we can see it. All right, so we're in our dashboard right now, and let's go to Appearance, then Widgets. So right now, our primary widget, which is this area right here, there is Recent Post, Recent Comments, Archives, Categories, and Meta, which corresponds with Recent Post, Recent Comments, Archives, Categories, and Meta. All right, so we're just going to actually click and hold and drag these out. So that we delete all of them. And now we can refresh this. And we can see that there's nothing in there. All right, so let's start putting things in there. The first thing we want to put maybe is a... Uh, the shopping cart. So if we scroll down and we look for it, we'll actually see WooCommerce cart. So just click and hold and drag it all the way up. All right. And now if we refresh, it'll say there's no products in the cart. Let's say we add to cart and we see that there is actually some products in the cart and we could check out right here. So that's a pretty cool widget. The next thing, let's add, let's add a price filter and I'll show you what that is. It's easiest to show you what that is. So if we could just find price filter right here, drag it and hold it and then let it go. All right, so if we refresh right here, we could see filter by price. So if we drag this over, it'll filter everything else just in the range. So if we go like this, we only want things that cost 7,000 to 14,000 and click filter. It only shows us that product. But if we go down a little bit, filter, it only shows us the products within the filter. Or maybe we only want really inexpensive products So we get all the products that are 0 to $679. So that's a pretty cool thing. Another thing that we can do is recent uh, reviews. And WooCommerce recent reviews, we just drag it up. And we can see what that does. Now, right now, we don't have any reviews, but if we clicked on this necklace, let's say, and submit my review, we could give it, you know, two stars or five stars and say, this is a great necklace. So your uh, customers can review it right there. And once we do that, we, we see the recent review. 
So that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing that we can do, and we're gonna add on to this later, is product categories. So we haven't set that up yet, but let's just add product categories uh, to it right now. So WooCommerce product categories. All right, and we haven't set it up yet, but we will. So we can refresh and see what that does. So there's no product categories yet, but we're gonna set that up pretty soon. All right, so that's pretty cool. That's how you get uh, the sidebar widget all uh, tricked out and looking pretty good. The next thing that we're gonna do is add multiple images to a product. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, let's say that for this diamond ring right here, we want to add multiple images. So we're not only see this image, but a few others also. So what we do is uh, we can click up here, edit product. And all we do is click add media. And upload files and select files. So I'm just gonna select these three. You can click the first one and then hold shift and click the last one or click them all and let go of shift and they'll all be selected. Then click open. Once uh, they've all uploaded, you don't need to insert them in a post or anything. You just press the X button and then click update. And now if we view the product, we can see that there are multiple images for the single product, which is pretty cool. Now we're going to add an about page. So to add a page, you just go to pages and add new. And then we click, we type about, maybe we could put about us. All right, and let's just paste some information in here. You can obviously type it in or do whatever you want. And uh, we have a whole bunch of options here. If you don't see some of these options, you can click this button. We have ABC check and we can format things differently and make things different colors and add quotes and everything that you can do in Microsoft Word. Uh, here we're going to add a picture in here on the about page. So I'm just going to click right here and uh, before the S and I'm going to click add media and I'm going to upload files and I'm going to select the files. So I'll find the uh, about picture, press open, and I'm just going to not make it full size, this image, because it's too big, but I'm going to make it 300 by 200. Then I'm going to click insert into post, insert into page. So now we have that page in right there, and let's click publish. All right, now if we go back to our website, we can see this new, uh, this new About Us page. So we click on it, and it's just a page. So it looks pretty cool. Um, let's edit the page, and let's get rid of this sidebar, because it doesn't really make any sense. So click Edit Page, and under Page Attributes, instead of Default Template, put full width and click update. All right, so now when we view the page, 
we see that there's no more sidebar, which is pretty cool. After someone gets done reading the About Us, maybe we want a button right here that takes us back to our home page so that people can shop. So let's go ahead and edit page again. And down here, let's actually add in a button. So if we uh, click this button right here, we can uh, put in button. Just click the button, button. All right, uh, in the title should be start shopping. The link, I'm just gonna do http colon two forward slashes www dot uh, mywebsite.com. So in order for it to make it turn it into a link, you have to put http colon two forward slashes. Just like in this example right here. So for size, I'm going to do medium. Style, I'm going to do uh, none. Predefined style, I'm going to put teal. And uh, yeah, that's it. Then I'm just going to click insert up here. All right, now that that's done, I'm actually going to highlight it and press the center, uh, align center, so that the button goes in the center. Then I'm gonna click update. Now you're not gonna see the button right here yet, but this is just the code for the button. So let's view our page. So we can see our page and after we get done reading the about page, we can press start shopping. Click on it and it goes back to our home page. So that's how you make the about us page. Next, we're going to make a contact page. So when someone goes to your website and uh, if they have any questions about any products or anything, they can email you. Uh, they can fill out a form and they'll email you their question and you can email them back. Um, so to do that, we go to pages and we click add new. All right, then the enter the page title, we'll just put contact. And we'll leave this blank right here. Under template, instead of default template, we're going to put contact form. And we're going to click publish. Once you do that, make sure when you go to Wootique, make sure that the email contact form is filled out contact form for email. So I'm just going to put my email address. And I'm going to put save all changes. All right, so now we can look at our website. And this gets messed up, but we're going to fix that later. But we can click on contact. And we can put in our name, our email, and a message and submit it. And then it says, thank you, your email was sent successfully. <clears throat> now if we go into our Gmail, we can see that uh, we have a contact form submission and uh, name, email, and message. Then you can reply back to them. Every once in a while it does go into spam, so just make sure that it's not into spam and just mark it as not spam. All right, so that is the contact form. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add categories to our website. So basically, uh, if you want to shop for earrings or bracelets or rings, um, we should be able to only see earrings, bracelets, and rings because that's the way people shop. You know, they're not shopping for random products. If they want to see all earrings, they should be able to see all earrings in one place. So the way we do that is we go back into our dashboard and we go to products and categories. And 
just give the name for your category. So my first category is going to be earrings. And we're going to click add new product category. All right, our second one is going to be necklaces. And we're just going to add it. Our third one. Our third one is going to be rings. And we're just going to add it. And our fourth one is going to be bracelets. And we're going to add it. All right, once we have our different product categories, we need to now categorize each product. So the way we do that is we go to products. And we every for each product we have, uh, we have to categorize it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click quick edit. And this is a necklace, so we're going to click necklace and we're going to click update. And we're going to keep on doing that. So this is also a necklace, and we're going to click update. This is a ring, so we're going to put it under rings and click update. This is a earring, update. And I'm pretty sure you're getting the point of all of this. Um, pretty simple stuff. All of this WordPress stuff is pretty easy once you start doing it a little bit. And this is a really good theme, so um, the people over at Woo Themes were very generous to give this out for free. Alright, I know this is taking a little while, but uh, this is a step-by-step -step tutorial, so you just have to deal with it. Alright, earrings, update, and we're almost done, rings. And sometimes it might maybe in two different categories, and you can do that. Necklaces. And diamond rings. Okay. All right, so we just scroll up, make sure everything is in the correct category. And they all have categories, except for the ebook. That was just a demonstration. And uh, now that we have the category, if we look at our website, nothing really happened. And that's because our menu isn't set up. So finally, we're going to get uh, to our menu. So to set up the menu, we go to uh, jewelry, uh, we go to the dashboard, and we go to appearance and menus. All right, and when it says enter menu name, well, you could just put menu here, that's fine, and click create menu. Okay, I'm gonna view all of the pages, and I'm just gonna check off home and press add to menu. So that adds it to menu. Uh, I'm gonna save the menu. And now what I'm gonna do is uh, assign it as a primary menu and click Save. So now if we look at our website, the only thing we're going to see in the menu is Home. OK, but let's add more uh, pages. So let's add, uh, let's press View All, and let's add the Shop page, Add to Menu. So now we have Home and Shop. Let's add the About Us page and also the <clears throat> and also the contact page. Add to menu. All right. And you can also reorder the menu by clicking and holding and dragging. Maybe we want a uh, contact here or here. And this is the order. So first it'll go home, shop, about us, contact. 
save the menu, we refresh, and we see home shop about us contact. All right, <clears throat> what about our categories that we just made though? Um, and what you have to do, and this is a little weird, it uh, took a little figuring out, but what you have to do is click on the screen options up here and check off product categories. What that does is when you scroll down here, you'll see product categories. So just check all these off and add to menu. Now we don't want them just listed like this. We actually want when we hover over shop for the categories to show up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it under, drag earrings under shop, and then I'm going to indent it. So drag and indent. And you don't do anything special to indent it. You just drag it over a little more. All right, now I'm going to save the menu. And now when I go back to my store and refresh, we'll see that this has a little arrow drop down and we can drill down to earrings, rings, necklaces, bracelets. So we click on earrings and we see just earrings. So if we click on rings, we will see just rings. And we can filter by price. and all of that good stuff, add to cart, and it updates right there. And we can search for just necklaces and search for just bracelets. So that's really cool, really helpful, uh, really helps increase sales because people can find what they're looking for much quicker and they don't just get frustrated and uh, leave your store. So that is how to add categories and uh, add and uh, do the menu. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is make the cart and the checkout a full width page. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say we go to our shop and we add in a ring and we go to our checkout page. Now, we have this uh, checkout page. And uh, actually, first, let's go to our shopping cart. So we have our shopping cart. And on the shopping cart, all you want them to be focused on, your customers, that is, is uh, the shopping cart and proceeding to checkout. You don't want to distract them with other things. So for something, for a page like a cart, you just want to have the cart on it and not other distractions because you don't want them to get distracted and then to leave your site and never purchase anything. So what we can do is we can go up here and edit the page. And for template, use full width and click update. Now we can view the page again. And now we don't have that sidebar. So now it's not going to distract them. Same thing with proceeding to checkout. When they're entering their, in their details, we don't want to distract them to do something else. We want them to actually complete the purchase. So again, we're going to edit page. <clears throat> we're going to edit page, and we're going to click full width and click update. Now we view page. And now when we view our items in the shopping cart, uh, and then we proceed to checkout, they'll both be full width and they won't be distracted so they're more likely to order your product. The next thing that we're gonna do is create a coupon code so that uh, you can track your advertisements. So let's say you make an advertisement on uh, Google AdWords or you make an advertisement on Facebook or you uh, se send out uh, postcards and uh, it's really good to track your advertisements to see which one is doing better so that you can double down on the ones that are doing really well and uh, stop the ones that aren't doing well. So a coupon code is a really good idea to track these uh, types of things. And it also increases um, the likelihood that people will purchase from you. 
So in order to create a coupon, you just go to WooCommerce and go to Coupons. Once you do that, you can add coupon. And right here you put uh, what the coupon code is. I'm just going to put Tyler's. And is it a whole cart discount or is it a percent or is it a product discount? So a cart discount is a on the total of the whole cart, a dollar amount. A cart percent is a percentage of the whole cart. Product is just used for a single product. So we're going to do cart and we're going to do $150. Obviously, it probably won't be this much. Maybe it'll be $5 or $2 or $10 or, you know, 5% off. Then click publish. Now if we go back to our store. Let's empty this out. Let's shop for earrings and let's say we want uh, these silver earrings. All right, and we add it to the cart and we view cart. And right here it says $150, um, but we can just put in our coupon code, Tyler's, apply coupon, and we see that our total order is zero and we have a discount. So that's really cool. So that's how you uh, set up a coupon code. The next thing we're going to learn about is shipping options. Do you want free shipping? Do you want flat rate shipping? What sort of uh, shipping options do you want to give your customers? So to do that, we go to WooCommerce and Settings. Now I'm not going to go over all shipping options, but I'm just going to show you uh, the main shipping options and show you how to figure everything out. So what we can do here is click on shipping right here. And uh, right here we can select the default shipping method. By default, maybe it's free or flat rate. And these are all the shipping methods that are enabled. So. Um, a lot of times I recommend free shipping if you're, you know, if uh, your product is expensive, then free shipping is great. It puts, you know, uh, puts the customer at ease and it actually helps increase sales. So if you can offer free shipping, that's great. Um, flat rate is also good. So let's set up a flat rate shipping. So we can click flat rate right here and just check off enable the sh uh, shipping method and maybe flat rate is ten dollars so we can save all changes and now if we go back to shipping we'll see that flat rate is checked off and free shipping is checked off so maybe we want to disable free shipping right now so we'll go to free shipping and we'll actually disable this and click save changes now shipping can also be set up uh, on the product page. So if you want uh, different um, prices for different products, you can also do that on the, on the actual product page. So let's see what that did in our store. So we disabled free shipping and we enabled flat rate shipping. So let's go ahead and select options, add the silver one to the cart, um, and check out. And we'll see that it's $150, flat rate shipping is $10, so it's $160 in total. So there's lots of shipping options and that is how you control them. So the last and final thing that we're gonna learn is setting up our payment gateway. Basically, how are we gonna accept money to uh, your store? Maybe this could be the most important thing besides setting up your storefront. Um, so the way we do that is we go to WooCommerce and we go to settings and we click on payment gateways. Now there are other things in here like inventory tax and everything, but let's click on payment gateways. 
So right here we have different things checked. Um, you, we can get paid by check, by direct uh, bank transfer, um, by PayPal, or cash on delivery, or credit card. This is all enabled by default. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go to direct bank transfers and um, we're going to actually uncheck that. And then we're going to go back to the payment gateways and now that's not an option anymore. We're actually going to uh, not accept checks either. And obviously you can, you know. All right, then I'm going to go back to payment gateways and now PayPal. So I'm going to make that the default payment gateway and PayPal is checked off. So up here we're going to click on PayPal. And we need to put in our PayPal email address. So if you don't have PayPal set up, just go to paypal.com and uh, sign up and you you will get a free PayPal account. So Every time someone purchases from you, they do take a small percent. I think it's like 30 cents and 2% uh, or something. But it's free initially to set up and everything. So it's not out of $100, you know, the, they may take $3 or something. So it's definitely worth it. All right, to set up, uh, once you get your PayPal account, just put in your email here. And make sure this is unchecked. Enable PayPal Sandbox. Sandbox is just used for testing purposes. So check that out and click Save Changes. All right, now when we go back to our jewelry store and uh, we go to checkout, we enter in all of our information and we have pay with PayPal. Once we place order, it's going to ask for our credit card information and it's gonna complete the order. So there you have it, a pretty amazing website, um, all for under $25 to start, and I think that's just incredible. Please remember to subscribe, please comment, and please rate the video, and uh, please remember to visit my website, knuton.org, that's C-O-N-U-T-A-N-T dot O-R-G, for more free lessons. Thanks a lot.